I'm Nick Nansen. And I'm JW Dix. We're the founders of the Celebrity Expert Network. Together, we've worked with some of the top celebrities in the business world, like Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy, Michael Gerber, Dan Kennedy, Tom Hopkins, and many more. We've driven hundreds of people to best-selling author status and gotten them exposure in the biggest media brands on TV and in newsstands. We've produced documentaries on business people and nonprofits, and Nick even won an Emmy as producer and director. We've seen lots of success stories. Some expected, others, let's just say we never saw them coming. Every day, new businesses are started. Most fail, some survive, but few are truly successful. We've searched the globe to find the common thread to success, and it always leads back to people. Now, we're taking you with us to reveal who they are, what they do, and how they've achieved what we all desire on Profiles of Success. Music's a little loud. The dong ceremony is a little over the top. The colors are a little bright. We tend to wear silly hats, high-fiving and dancing around. We have a good time. It's got my flair. Some people don't like to buy cars in that atmosphere, and that's okay. We're not for everybody, but uh, there's a lot of love in it. And I think you can feel that when you walk in the door. Hey folks, Tracy Myers here in downtown Winston-Salem at the Aperture Cinema, and we're here for the red carpet world premiere of the movie Carmen. What do you think about Dad being in the movie tonight? I'm very excited that my dad has accomplished so much in his life and that he finally gets to come at this moment. Um, I'm just proud of him. All right, tell me what you think about Dad being in the movie tonight. Well, I am excited. <laughs> it's unreal. I mean, it's just amazing what this child has took this family and put us on top. I haven't seen it yet. I don't have any idea about it, but I think it's going to show, you know, how these two blue-collar guys turned, uh, you know, a small independent car lot into something that's revolutionized the industry now. Yeah. Tell me about your son. <laughs> he is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we have always had a great connection. I'll call him my oldest son. He's a, a grown man now, but I still like to tell him what to do. <laughs> Does he listen? Uh, no. <laughs> His dad never listened, and he got where he's at. Tracy's a lifelong friend of mine and my husband's, and when he started doing uh, Frank Myers commercials several years ago, my husband would give him so much grief, but really he was so proud of him for taking something he loved, entertainment, and making it work for his business. So you guys know Tracy very well. Tell me how excited you are for tonight. Super. So excited. excited. Yeah, I'm ready to see this movie here. Have a good time. <laughs> Are you guys in the movie? Yes. Of you think? Course, of course we are. I mean, we're the BDRs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world premiere of Carmen. <laughs> I never saw anybody that could sell stuff that had no monetary value to really anybody like my dad could. Frank is unreal when it comes to selling anything. About anything he touches, uh, it will turn to gold. It's not that he needs the money, it's the game. Frank will buy anything. Frank will buy uh, a trailer full of uh, cotton candy if he knows he can sell it and make 10 cents. It's, it's fun for him. Even as a young child, my mother would stop every day at the grocery store and I'd buy bubble gum for a penny. 
sort of like this stuff behind you. I buy it for a penny, sell it for a nickel. He did flea market stuff. He did t-shirts. He sold insurance on the side. I bought and sold, traded guns, knives. I was big time in the flea market. My dad would get out in the crowd and put on a show. People came to the auction to see my dad sell his stuff. One day, a guy approached me and said, why don't you quit messing with dollar junk and get in the car business? And I bought that car and sit it in my yard. And in less than three days, I sold it and made $600. I said, wow, I made $600 in a day. This is me. From there, it got in his blood. I am a firm believer that God gives everyone a calling. I think that day, Everyone knew, especially me, that I was a car man. I remember I really didn't like the things that he did to be in the car business. For example, we would be going out to eat as a family, he'd see a car on the side of the road and he would pull right into their driveway. And he'd go knock on the door. He's not shy. My mom's like, Frank, there's nobody here. There's nobody here. It's a Saturday night, nobody's here. Well, he would go to the back door and he's looking in the windows. He was determined to talk to these people to buy this car. And he did that the entire way to the restaurant and the entire way back. And those are my earliest memories of like, man, I will never do this because I hate this, you know? Tracy was always a mama's boy. <laughs> but mama was good to that boy. And, and, and dad had to work a lot and the other child hung to my side and ran with me a lot. I have two boys, Tracy and Kelly. Me and my brother were, were and are very different. Kelly was the success story. He was really headstrong. Tracy was a talker, a cut up. You know, I never really felt like I fit in when I was a kid with the other kids. They were athletes and playing outside. I was inside reading books. When I was growing up, it started that I wanted to be a magician. That's the earliest thing I remember. Then I wanted to be a guitar player, rock star. Uh, then it was a uh, DJ. But looking at Tracy, I said, there's no way you've never been in the car business. There were times where he begged me not to get into the car business because I think he saw in my eye, I know he saw in my eyes, that's not what I wanted to do and that's not what I had a passion for. But he went away to college, to Atlanta and he had to have a little part-time job. So I uh, worked everything from um, waiting tables to bussing tables to the retail job at the mall. And he did some DJ work. He had a little band with a friend down there and they just had a good time for a while. So I was flipping through the paper uh, one day and it said make $45,000 with no experience selling cars. I can do that. Uh, I always growing up selling knickknacks with my dad, and I'd watch my dad. So I said, that's me, and $45,000 is pretty good money. So I went to school from 8 to 1 and sold cars from 3 to midnight. You know, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I actually sold cars at this dealership for a year and a half before I told my dad because I thought he would kill me. But when I heard he was selling cars in Atlanta, I said, wow, I can't believe this. I mean, here he goes to school for communications and radio. I said, what is the boy doing? So I watched it for a while. He, he, he did real well down there. He learned the basics of the front end of the deal. So one day I called my dad up and I said, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to come home. I said, you got anything for me? He said, yeah, I got something for you. So I turned in my notice, left my job, packed my car, came home. And when he walked in the door, I said, I'm so glad that you decided to come home for New Year's. And he said, no, I'm home. Um, that was maybe a Thursday or Friday. He said, come on in Monday. Came in shirt and tie, showed up. He said, you're a little overdressed, aren't you? I said, no, nah, I'll be selling cars. He said, no, you're going to the detail shop. You put him in the wash pit. Washing cars, I mean, he had to pay the price. I was really upset because I'd send him to college and I'm thinking he's going to wash cars now. I was obviously angry. I went from making really good money to eight bucks an hour, seven bucks an hour, whatever it was. Tracy needed to learn from the back end to the front end of what it's all about. He always said, nobody will respect you if you don't work your way up. And I think he stayed in the back end 
in the detail shop for a couple of years. So he's, he's paid his dues. <laughs> but it was a year later. I hadn't been moved into sales yet. And I remember one day I'm, I'm washing cars. It was the summertime because it was hot. That's, that's all I remember. I saw somebody on the lot. All the salespeople were busy. I threw down my sponge. I walked out there in my galoshes. I said, I'm selling these people a car. I'm getting out of this detail shop today and sold them a car in galoshes and I was nasty, I stank. Tracy could sell ice to an Eskimo. As Tracy got into growing with the business, he would go to Frank and he would say, hey, this person's doing this this way and I think we can save money or do it another way. I wanted to go into a, um, a different direction than he did and we were always just, his button heads. Oh yes, they did butt heads. That went on for 12, 13, 14 years. Looking back, that was really good for the way we grew the business. They meet quite frequently and, and discuss ideas off each other and uh, it's really it's really been refreshing to me to kind of see that father and son relationship in the business. They have different approaches to sell cars but they came from different generations. When I came into the company he was primarily a wholesale only op operation. We got up to 200, 250 cars a month and he would sell those to other dealerships. So he would supply most of their retail inventory. I saw we were right there at a major, uh, major interstate, and I said, you know, you can really sell cars here to people off the street. He said, well, we do. I said, yeah, but there's no set hours. You know, we've got to have set hours. It's got to be, a, it's got to be structured more like a business. That wasn't too hard for him to grasp onto. Uh, the rest of it, I kind of pushed, pushed my way through it and just did it and asked for forgiveness later. He was just a natural after he got in. So all those years later, when I did get promoted to assistant sales manager and then sales manager, then general manager, and then we started talking about, you know, I think it's time, son, we talk about you buying the dealership. I'm like, what? We had somebody that was confident now that could take over and watch after the money and the business and the employees. 2005, he bought it, we put it all on paper. It, it just kind of shocked me because there was no gradual lead up. It was just, I think it's time. Frank had always wanted it to happen, but he was not going to just 100% let go of something he had worked for so many years. I don't think they listened too well when I first told them, hey, look, I'll take it back if you mess up. And I really meant it. But Mama didn't like it when I told him that, but I've not had to take it back. <laughs> and uh, there's a really cool letter uh, that he wrote me, four or five, six page letter, handwritten, that now's your time and I'm proud of you and you can do this. He's took it and it's just been unbelievable what he's done with it. I mean, look at it. He's a doer. He's, he's one of those people that, you know, you come up with a good idea, the rest of us go chew on it and maybe do it or forget about it. Tracy's already got it done within an hour. When I saw the turnover was so high, not just at our dealership, but in the used car industry, new car industry in general, there had to be a way to keep people in the business longer. We would always ask, well, why are you leaving? And they would all say, well, I can't work on this commission. That's the way they did it. They did put them on commission. You don't sell, you don't get any money. I came up with a non-commissioned sales uh, professional pay plan, which was a small salary, uh, and um, bonuses based on complete customer satisfaction and, and units, so to speak. And I presented that to my dad and he said, this is the kiss of death. I'm telling you, this will not work. There was quite a battle to get that to happen. We went through about two years of back and forth when he owned the dealership. And the first thing I did when I bought the dealership is I changed the pay plan. And they've tweaked it several different ways, both of them together. An amazing thing happened, the sales staff turnover almost went away overnight. Doing away with the commission, making everybody like a family and making them feel secure, having health insurance and making a decent paycheck every week. And that's a good way to do it. Tracy's a trendsetter. He, he does things that other people are scared to do. I don't look at the awards he's got, it's just unreal. We've gotten a lot of national recognition based on the things that we brought into the store that's totally different from anything else any other dealership's doing. 
Uh, the, the biggest things we brought in, uh, other than the non-commissioned pay plan, is our lifetime engine warranty. We were one of the first dealers doing that. Car Buyers Bill of Rights is essentially 10 reasons why we feel like customers should choose us over everybody else. If the dealer doesn't stand behind their product, how can a consumer expect to trust that dealer uh, and have a relationship with that dealer ongoing. He actually believed in helping a, a customer. His uh, whole idea of how a business should be operated was unique from anywhere I'd worked in 20 years. How are you? I'm so glad, so glad you're here. We got food and it's gonna go to waste if you don't eat it. Come on over. The people we're selling cars to are people that we associate with day in, day out. They're people that we know. They're people that we see at the mall and at the restaurant and uh, at church on Sundays. I mean, we just try to make it fun and interactive for the consumer and, you know, real transparent. Went through 137 cases of drinks, enough ribs and barbecue chicken to feed 300 people. The ice cream lady, she's left, she's out. And we've got an hour to go. <laughs> I think that in life, you know, if you find a way that you can take what you do, whatever that is, and tie your passions or your loves into it and elevate it and take it to another level, that would be great. So we took all that stuff and brought it into the dealership from the excitement, from the show, from the lights, to the party atmosphere, to the loud music, to the fun, the effects. And you can win up to $500 too at Frank Myers Automax when you refer a friend that buys a car. Let's hear it once again for Chris. Uh, making customers feel part of the process, putting them on a stage, and making them part of the experience. Three, two, one. The gong experience started with the delivery process, which is the announcement. Uh, attention ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Smith has just bought a 2009 Ford Fusion. Please stand up, clap your hands, and welcome them to the Frank Byers family. And everybody stands up. But then we added the gong and then we added the red carpet and now of course we filmed them banging the gong and all the stuff that they do and we put that on the website and on um, YouTube. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Everybody rocks. I'm in a pickle. My doctor told me to calm down before my heart explodes. When you trade in any vehicle, I'll give you the savings equivalent of up to $1,000 off of groceries, $1,000 off of gas, $1,000 off your cell phone bill, and $1,000 off your favorite restaurants. That's up to $4,000 in savings. Tracy was really the one to get the TV rolling. I mean, he's put a lot of work into these commercials. Everybody thinks they're crazy. I love superhero movies. So I want to save you from a car you hate. This week, I'm saving Winston-Salem from unsafe, unreliable, and uncool vehicles by giving you up to $4,000 more than your old trade is worth. One day, Tracy came in with this logo. Everybody rides. 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 You know, everywhere you go, everybody rides. They watch, see me walk in somewhere. I walk in the church, there's everybody rides, you know. It was dedication. Uh, I actually went to school for radio and TV broadcasting. Marketing was my, my minor. And I said, you know, the, the marketing part of it needs to be a little bit different. Right now, we're competing with everybody, and we don't want to compete with everybody else. My dad was out of town, so I made sure he was going to be out of town when the film crew came in. They film it, they send it to us. I'm going to say, look, here's our next commercial. He looks in and said, you can't put that crap on TV. I was like, why? Well, he said, look at the girl. She's almost naked. And I said, well, that's the way she showed up, and she didn't have a change of clothes. She's getting paid by the hour. He called the film crew back in, and I always felt like there should be a personality in the commercials because the models and the actor didn't work. So I stepped in front of the camera and did it. And uh, the response rate was, it was really good. Oh, I found a dead monster in the trunk of a traded in vehicle and it's ugly. You've got to check this thing out at frankfiresauto.com. Tracy Myers here. I want to make sure you don't have a trunk monster. So bring your old car to Frank Myers Automax. Frank loved it. It took off. People say, 
That is so funny. They knew all our characters. My son played most of the characters, the, the Chainsaw Charlie and the Elvis. And over the years, we really kind of tweaked the, uh, the messages and the characters and the fun of the commercial. And the more we can set ourselves apart in the marketplace, you know, it, it, the more return on investment we really got. I won the uh, National Quality Deal of the Year Award in 2006, which was really cool because it happened uh, the week of Father's Day. And I, it's the year that I bought the store. I was honored just to be nominated, but mom and dad went with me and my wife and my son and my daughter. It's the highest honor you can win in the used car industry. And I was the youngest dealer to ever win it. It, that was a real defining moment for me because my dad was there on Father's Day weekend. I won that award. Uh, we, we were named the number one small business in North Carolina last year. Book came out. Uncle Frank says I've gotten incredible feedback for that. It was a best-selling book. Uh, people start calling and asking, how are you doing this? And the more those phone calls came in, the more that I actually felt like that I could help these dealers and tell them what we did. So, uh, you know, I, I started speaking to uh, dealer associations, at dealer conferences, and giving back to some of the guys that helped me along the way. I was speaking uh, at all these conferences and the book and another book coming out and, and the Brian Tracy show, all these things that really this business has allowed me to do. You know, I couldn't ask for a better life right now. It just makes me feel great that, that, that he's doing it. It makes me feel bad I misread him. I think Tracy is successful because he is very personable. He cares about people. So I think that's one of the things that Tracy's brought to me that Tracy takes his time to sit down with people that you know, more or less maybe I've been a gunslinger all the years. I wanted, to, I wanted them to know me as a person and I like to get to know them as a person. He'll say, uh, well, let, let's just investigate it. Let, let's sit down and listen and sympathize with the people and think it out clearly. I've always been impressed with his, uh, the way he handles himself, the way he handles his personnel his customers. He's always cared about us. He's always told me if, you know, anything I need other than cars, uh, you know, call him, like a friend. I mean, I think he's got the ability, but he also is a family man, and he's got two children that he loves, and, and he tries to spend as much time as he can with them. And this business uh, really um, requires about all of his time. Sometimes my baby girl's in the bed when I get home. And that's the part of this that a lot of folks don't realize. And it's because I have a passion for what I do. I love what I do. I don't think I would want to do anything else. He's just a first class person and a, and a great business person. In the car business, Tracy Myers is the guy that everybody wants to be and they're trying to beat, but they'd be fortunate enough just to be him. But I have learned a lot from Tracy just by, by watching him take these numbers from where I had them to where the numbers are today. And we were just both awestruck because of what Tracy has achieved. The dealership is not just a family business. It's not just a legacy project. It's not just a way to make money. Of course, it is all those things. But more importantly for me, it's, it's a passion. It's got my flair. We're not for everybody. Music's a little loud. The gong ceremony is a little over the top. The colors are a little bright. We tend to wear silly hats, high-fiving and dancing around. We have a good time. Some people don't like to buy cars in that atmosphere, and that's okay. We're not for everybody, but you know, there's a lot of love in it. And I think you can feel that when you walk in the door. Man, it turned out great. I'm just glad everybody's here. I mean, it's cool, but to share it with family and friends, nothing like it. Very blessed. Awesome. All right, after seeing the movie, tell me what you think. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. It was well done. You've got a producer and director with Nick Nanton, um, award-winning. I mean, it's going to be awesome. But to have a friend and a, uh, like Tracy and the Myers family, who I've known for years, but as a boss as well. It's just, it's great to kind of see 
all that come together in a film and plus for everyone else to be able to see it as well. It, it was amazing and um, I'm just so proud to be part of this family. So proud of my husband. He is an amazing provider. He's an amazing role model for, for our children and I just, I just couldn't ask for, for anything better than, than what he's done. And this is different, <laughs> like how many little documentaries, movies do you see about a car dealership? Really, that was freaking awesome. Okay, good job, Tracy. <laughs> But seeing it all put together, what did you think? I was amazed. I would have never thought that it could have come together that well. Um, that I was, <laughs> that I sounded so good on camera. <laughs> but now I am from Yakin County. <laughs> but, I, I, but I didn't hear any Yakinese in there. Okay, <laughs> Yakinese, that's what it's called. Uh, um, it's very touching. Daddy here shed some tears. It was tough to sit and listen to how far it had come in so short of time, but we were real pleased and we're proud of our son. What did you think about it, how it all came together? I, it's amazing. I mean, to take a kid and rear him like I did, the pressure and the toughness and the strictness and the firmness that I put on that child. and. I feel like I want to be working for him, Tyler. <laughs> now, after, after seeing it, I don't think everybody realized you had him back there washing cars forever. I did. He paid his dues. This child, like he said, I, I, I taught him growing up that in businesses, so many self-made individuals will rear their children and just hand it to them. But this child has earned every single dime of this company. He started from the bottom, he's worked his way up, he got him a real good education, and I, I'm just, I, I, I'm amazed. I mean, I'm just amazed what he's done with it. Uh, it was definitely awesome. It was more than I expected. Uh, I knew a lot because I've been working there, but I, even I learned stuff uh, that I didn't know. I didn't know Tracy had worked back in detail. Um, I guess that's part of why he's so humble in everything that he does, and uh, you know, I just hope to be you know, to keep growing and keep doing what we're doing and go even, go even further with it. When you go to work tomorrow morning, how different is it going to be than it was today after seeing this movie? Uh, it's definitely, you know, you, you care about everybody. None of that's going to change. But knowing where it started more so than I did before, it, it's awesome to think that, I mean, they literally came from nothing to everything. All I have to say is everybody rides. Yeah. <laughs>